Now, as we have discussed in several sections and chapters, model information goes into model space and annotations go in paper space. In order to annotate anything, we need to have the model visible in paper space. This is done through viewports. And I've shown you a couple of times now how to quickly create a viewport. Think of a viewport as a window to model space or a photograph of that model that you can label. And it just happens to be in paper space. Now, since each viewport is its own photo, we can do anything we want to them and they won't affect anything else, not to the model. Just like if I took a picture of my house, I can do whatever I want to that picture. My house is unchanged and perfectly fine. That's how a viewport works. You can use those viewports to arrange the views of your drawing on a sheet. You can move and resize layout viewports all that you want. By using layout viewports, you have more control over the display. For example, you can freeze certain layers in one layout viewport without affecting the others. Let's open up the ice rink example file. This file right now is in model space, and we have one paper space tab. It only shows the top part of the ice rink. Let's create a new one. Right click on it, select new layout, and it will automatically call it layout two. Now, if you want to change that, right click on the layout tab, click on rename, and just give it whatever you want, type it in. When a new tab is made, a default viewport is created, and the view that's created in it it's sort of like a zoom extents inside the viewport. You can use it or you can make another one from scratch. We're going to use this one and then we'll make another one. Remember a viewport is an object just like anything else. It can be moved, copied, and deleted too. If we use the move command, select the viewport, moves it all the way over here. Now you can grip edit a viewport as well. Select it and it changes the shape. Now I'm going to move it again, put it over here. You activate a viewport by double clicking inside it. Once you're inside it, if you zoom or pan, it changes the view inside that viewport, so be careful. But let's change the scale of this. You do that while the viewport is activated. Come down here to the status bar, and go to your XREF scales. Let's change it to one to 100. I'm going to realign this a little bit like that. Once you get your viewport scale and the view position the way you want it, make sure you lock it. Go back down to the status bar and click on this lock button. That way you can't accidentally pan or zoom it into the wrong place. Double click outside of the viewport to deactivate it and go back into paper space. Now let's make a new viewport. If you want to create a new viewport, then you go to the layout tab and you come to the Layout Viewports panel right here. You have a couple of different options. If you click on the button here, you can select an object. So if you already have an object created, something that's closed, like a polygon or a closed polyline, you can select that and it will become your new viewport. You can draw a rectangular shaped viewport or draw a polygonal shape. Let's draw a rectangular shape. You can just pick anywhere and draw a rectangle. That creates a brand new viewport for you. Double click inside to activate it and zoom into this entrance. Let's set the scale at a 1 to 30. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's make it 1 to 10. And lock the viewport. Deactivate the viewport. And when a viewport is locked, remember you can't change the scale or pan inside it. And that's a good thing because you don't want that to happen. Lock it right away. Now let's add some overall dimensions here. Go to the Annotate tab, click on the dimensions, and here you go. We have some inside dimensions as well. And now we can do that here without messing up anything inside our model space. And it doesn't show up on our other drawings, which is great. If I activate this paper space viewport, I kind of zoom in here and I dimension while I'm in model space. These dimensions are now going to show up everywhere. When I come over here, you can see them showing up in this drawing. That's why I prefer to dimension and annotate in paper space only, because I don't want to have to deal with that. Now, sometimes you need a viewport that's not rectangular in shape, and that's okay. We kind of alluded to that. 
go to your layout tab, and this is a contextual tab. It will only show up when you're in paper space. Come over here, go to polygon, draw your shape, press enter. Activate the viewport, move it around so you can see it, and you can also always come back and edit your viewport to make it a little smaller or to change exactly what's being shown. You can get some crazy shapes. Sometimes that's necessary. Now, sometimes when you activate a viewport, you activate the wrong one. That's okay. Press Control R, and that will toggle through all of the viewports in the Paper Space tab. So that makes it easier to get to the one that you need, especially if you're having trouble. Now, you can also clip a viewport. Pick on the Clip option. I find a viewport. I select it. Press Enter. Now I have a couple of options. I can draw a new clip, just like I would any other polyline, and that will recreate it and give it a polyline type of a format. So in case you have a viewport already, but it doesn't quite show it the way you want it, you can change it by clipping it. Or you can just create a brand new one, whatever works best for you, whatever the situation calls for. So there are a lot of things you can do with viewports. You can also, don't forget, you can also freeze specific layers in one viewport only so that you don't see things here, but it keeps them on your other views. And this is what becomes so powerful about viewports and paper space inside one file that allows you to create many different types of views all in one drawing without affecting your model.